Pinterest, I've taken the delay out of it so it just keeps cycling around. That is, that is bonkers. That is so fast. I can't believe it. Welcome back, dear friends, for another exciting episode. And it's getting even more exciting with the ukulele machine because it's now actually playing things. Now this time, I need to work out how to mount the motors so I can get four motors plucking all four strings. Let's have a look at the ideas so far. In the true spirit of this whole project, there's no planning, or very little. If you remember last time I mounted this first one, just to check proof of concept, on the um, laboratory holder thing stand, and it worked perfectly, but I realised you had to be very accurately able to control and adjust the height if it was too low, the motor wouldn't have enough force to actually flip the little plastic thing out of the way and to do the plucking. There, I don't need that anymore lined up because I know it works. There we are, there's a little piece of wood. There's the screw there, one of the mounting screws, and it just happened with this width of wood. Perfect. And it just works beautifully, and there's a little bit of filament sticking out. So, I'm thinking about clamping them in somehow. 10mm acrylic nice ornate thing with two large-ish, possibly something like M5 or something for rigidity, screws that come up and then go through some sort of mounting thing over the top because the motors are so thin, they're about 12 millimeters deep so that doesn't leave very much, there's not enough of these to sit proud of something and have something underneath. The support system has got to be on the top so some organic shape possibly, it's like art deco-y type thing with frets cut out, don't know, it's an exciting thing but four of them arranged somehow, won't be symmetrical because there's not room for them and then I suddenly thought cooling because if you remember I'm driving these motors <laughs> roughly about eight volts, they're three volts, that's not particularly conducive to longevity. Um, so I realised there are holes in the front and the back through which to blow air, cooling air. And I, know, I know they're not on all the time, they're just sort of flicking from one side to the other, but over a period of time that's got to heat up the coils and the, com and the centre, the commutator, whatever, in the centre. Um, and that can't actually dissipate heat at all, because obviously inside here are the, the magnet, permanent magnets are on the outside, so the commutator's stuck in the middle. But you can blow air through, so what I thought I'd do is to um, design some nice thing to be 3D printed out of metallic fibre that can push over the top, some ornate thing, and then can have a pipe, air pipes. Now we do like pipes in steampunk type of machines, so having four air pipes all blowing air through will be very exciting and should solve the problem of these overheating. So that's the stage I've got at now. What I'm going to do now is on the CAD software actually draw, design one of these, draw it out to scale, and then try and sort out some way of supporting them all because it needs to obviously hold all four over here and it could look beautiful, well hopefully it will anyway, I'll get back to you and I've got some more tangible ideas lots of people have one of these titchy little baby ones which are pretty handy you can't beat the grown up ones just as I've learnt, you can't beat the grown up stepper motors um, here's the idea sheet for the ukulele. These are all the bits I've designed and cut out so far. And you've got little twiddly bits that I can plant on things. Uh, it is so enjoyable. I, because I'm not planning this, it's going to be far more like a proper steampunk machine or Victorian engineering, where things had to go where they mechanically were forced to go. They couldn't be arranged nicely like everything can these days. So I've gone ahead and designed this. I have no idea how I'm going to mount them or anything just as I went ahead and designed the motor holders and then realised I needed to change the shape and other bits and pieces. But it is so exciting. I don't know how I'm going to mount these at all, but I'm going to. <laughs> funny, funny way of working, most enjoyable. It's on the pen drive. I probably could wire up some sort of network, but it works. Now to put it on the lovely old Windows XP computer that carries on working and I'm so thrilled and it runs the laser cutter and it's a joy I always like Windows XP I am 
I'm so lucky to have these facilities. I mean, it's just incredible. I can never go over it, and I really go on about it. The fact I can draw something out on the computer, and then the next minute I'm actually holding a 3D object. It's unbelievable. Here's the motor. See if it fits. Ooh, that's nice. I allowed a little, I made the hole slightly smaller to allow for the half millimeter width of the laser beam. That pushes in there beautifully. And there's just enough here to have a nice little decorative M3 screw just to clamp that really firmly. How lovely. That's quite big though, isn't it? Let's have a look at it over the thing. Hmm, that's huge. If I've got to get four of them and I wanted them like that, that's getting really, really, really big. All those Philistines saying, they're too big, it won't fit. You're absolutely right. There is absolutely no way. Here's the available space I've got over the strings to pluck them. Absolutely no way of getting four of them over the four strings. Back to the drawing board. It's some time later and I've got new design. A new design even. I'm very pleased with this. There are the four strings that would normally go underneath them. They line up with the strings, each of them. I think they're going to look beautiful with these engraved bits. And the same sized holes and things and fixings. Can you see the deliberate mistake I've made? Happily drawing away these things. Obviously I need to drill a hole through them and get an M3 nut and bolt sticking through them. Have you spotted it yet? I'm glad I did. A bit slow on the uptake, I can tell you. These! There is absolutely no way, if this is cut out of 10mm or any actually width of acrylic, that I can actually get a drill bit in there. And even if I could drill through one of these and through the middle, I can't even get a nut and bolt in there. What an idiot. Voila! Got it sorted out. Very pleased with that. I think that looks very nice as well. Sort of abstract, you know, something or other. Well, I don't know what. They've come out very nicely. Very pleased with that. I also thought about engraving the um, string key note pitch, whatever, on each one. Partly to help me not confuse them. And secondly, just because it's going to look nice. The motor will push in there and then they'll clamp just enough. Lovely. Now I've got to sort out how to mount these over the strings and over this. And I've remembered I haven't got that much space here because of obviously these clamps and things. So I've drawn it out, sort of. Here we are. Strings, I've moved those down and drawn a circle where each of that lines up with the fixing holes. And I've decided to have fixings either side that will screw into the mounting board. There are the position of the there's the positions of the two um, clamp things. So I've got to link all these up somehow. Out of all the arc tools, my favourite is definitely that one. If you remember, I mentioned it earlier, where you can just, well, for example, I could click on that, click on that, and then when I'm happy with it, look! And it plays a tune for some unknown reason. And it looks really nice. I use it so often, that tool, to sort of design feet for things. So I'm going to have a fiddle with that and see what I can come up with. I've got the ooze drilled, such as these ones for screwing these down, all those drilled ready for tapping and things, and I've got these drilled. There's always a little bit of doubt, because I'm used to screw this up on a regular basis and shatter them and break them, so I thought I'd drill them first before engraving these designs on the other side. It's just to get the twiddly bit sorted out and downloaded, and let's test it. I think I've got it lined up okay, so see what happens. Uh, start. And you can't actually see anything because I've stupidly moved it to this end of the laser machine just so I could line up the bottoms with the platen on the machine. We'll see when it's finished. It's not too bad, it doesn't quite line up. 
I think it's very difficult to get these things tight, but that's fine because you're not going to be able to see both sides of this at the same time unless I suppose you're a hammerhead shark or something. But that'll be fine. Good. Finally, I've finished the two brackets. Well, they're ready for painting now that support it. You can see the idea now, what I was imagining it. Imagining. I'm also pleased with how they look because I did on um and on. I tried several different designs, just wasn't happy with them. And then following that same theme of coming up and down, like the clamps and things, I'm really pleased with that. And these funny shaped bits underneath, most exciting. I'm feeling particularly cock a hoop today. So I'm filming the spraying from a different angle. The camera doesn't do this colour justice. It's a lovely rich um, brass colour, funnily enough. Oh, my goal today is to get it playing four notes, lots of different chords and keys and things, randomly, that's randomly or pseudo-randomly as we say in the trade. Right, this is what I've been doing. Look! Right, I got it together, painted as you saw last time, got it together and come up with an incredibly complicated and ungainly way of adjusting the height of each of these using M6 threads. That this bit is threaded and these bits are free to turn. It's beautiful little felt washers so they can twist round. I've adjusted them roughly right to 22 millimeters above the strings I think. I've also made four of these delightful little assemblages. A little bit of that filament, weed whacker filament. I'm going to glue that in and I'm going to stain them or in fact cheating. I may just colour them because I was meant to do it earlier and then got involved in all sorts of other things and I can't bother, be bothered to wait for the, uh, the stain to dry so I might cheat. Get them on there Get that on the base, and then get things wired up. It's all coming together, sort of. That's what I'm talking about. The little stop, you can see. If the strings are running parallel down here, hold on a minute, then that's going to be one side. I've tried to arrange them. I realised that having the screws at 90 degrees to the string, the little stop screw, is perfect. So I've got four of them that can all pluck a string, hopefully. I've just had a brilliant idea. I've been trying to work out what music, what to get it to play the ukulele once it's all finished or on its way to being finished. I can think of anything. My wife suggested the national anthem. Good idea, very sort of steampunk and Victorian things. And I assume there's not any um, copyright issues or anything like that. And I just suddenly realised, duelling banjos, you know that incredible, well, pretty famous tune from the film Deliverance with Burt Reynolds, etc, etc. That would be absolutely brilliant. Oh, a wave of enthusiasm has just washed over me. That is so exciting. I would love to do that. I don't know about copyright issues and things because YouTube have automatic, very strict, absolutely everything. I'll just have to experiment but I am highly motivated. Excellent. Well, I've wired it all up at a slight angle, so I've just got this first motor going. I'm going to use the same driver and everything else I did and sketch just to flick it from one side to the other. And then I can adjust it, hopefully. Let's give that a go. Right, so that's too low. That's not got enough force to go around. That's perfect. Lovely. Right, I'll do that for the other three. I've got the all four adjusted. Easier said than done. Possibly not such a good idea having these tightened at the bottom, but that's um, the last one there, which is E, theoretically. I now know. I think that's a good time to stop for lunch. And after lunch, I've got another one of them, so I've used one of the H bridges in that, I've got another one there and two more H bridges in there, so I can now wire all four up and experiment with the cacophony that hopefully will be possible. That's better, they're all working in order, 
Fabulous. Don't know what the order means, but they are. Oh, the other thing about these interfaces, I never read the destructions, obviously, but I noticed when I was soldering wires on that they've got another jumper here. And I read up on it, and it actually, these boards have a 5 volt regulator on it, so if you run them from something like that, something under 12 volts to that connection, they produce their own 5 volt logic voltage to control the IC. I was connecting this one up to the 5 volts out from the Arduino, which you're probably not meant to do, but never mind, I don't need that anymore. I've saved two pieces of wire. That's very exciting. Next thing, add a random element or something. In fact, I might keep the pluckers like that and just put that back onto random and see what it sounds like. That's even more incredible. What have I done? Well, I've changed the um, delay between each strum, as it turns out, to 100 milliseconds, so 10 times a second. And I found, in fact, it only needs 20 milliseconds to get each one to work. I tried it at 10, some of them didn't work reliably, but 20. That is proper strumming. That's amazing. I can't believe it. Right, now definitely to see what sort of cacophony it can produce. Just out of interest, I've taken the delay out of it so it just keeps cycling around. That is that is bonkers. That is so fast. I can't believe it. Talk about proof of concept. Right. Now to add this changing whatever calls and stuff fingering, and I'll get back to you. It's as simple as commenting in this group fret movement. So it's going to keep moving all the frets to pseudo random places. And then it's going to pluck it. No delays or anything else. It's just going to have to wait. That's the good thing about using delay. I know you can wait for um, microseconds and milliseconds and things, which is very handy because it can allow other code to work. I'm shaking because I'm so excited. Um, but in this situation, I just want to wait for one thing to happen before another. Shall we upload it and see what happens? Because I haven't tried this yet. Oh, I can't even find the uploading thing. Right. Well, uploading. Yes. See what happens. is you wouldn't normally with four fingers or five fingers doing the fingering you wouldn't move completely in different places unless you're some sort of alien with very long fingers ah oh, proof of concept i am absolutely thrilled so <laughs> thanks very much for watching hope to see you next time please remember to click subscribe and the bell button Next time, definitely working towards getting it to actually play something like the dueling banjos. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.